So in this video, I'm going to go through the configuration side of the website, kind of just everything I do when I set up a website um, on the shop parameters. So we're just going to go through them one at a time, and I'm just going to set it up. Um, so we're going to go to the general tab here and um, enable SSL. I don't have SSL installed on this website, um, but normally I would enable it on all pages and, you know, enable it here first. And then once SSL is installed and enabled, then you can enable, enable it here. Um, and 1.7 is supposed to be run better on SSL for all pages. Okay, allow iframes on HTML pages. This I leave this on default off unless I'm going to be uploading and embedding videos. And sometimes you have to turn this on. Um, and this is where you can display brands and suppliers. Um, for this website, I'm going to turn this off uh, because we don't need uh, for this website we're putting together um, on a demo. And then enable multi stores. So you can actually set up multiple stores using the same back office. I only use this in rare cases. I prefer having independent stores unless the stores are going to be sharing products. Um, like a wholesale, if you have a really, I've done it where you have really custom wholesale and retail websites all on the same, but they want to display different information to the wholesalers. Um, then I use multi store and create a retail store and a wholesale store with the same product information. And you can change the main shop activity. Okay, so that's it for there. We'll go ahead and save that one. And um, while that's saving, uh, I'll go over this is your maintenance tab. You know, reloading. Uh, so go over here to maintenance. Sorry, the reason it's so slow, it's normally not this slow, is um, our internet where I'm at is really terrible. But. Um, so here's maintenance. You can enable shop right now. I've got it in maintenance mode, hence this up here. And if you want to be able to view your store while in maintenance mode, you need to add your IP. And I've just added it um, right here uh, so that I can view it and then save. Okay. That's the general tab. So now let's go to the order settings. And this is where you set just kind of the different ways you want to take an order, enable a final summary, enable guest checkout. If you don't want a guest checkout, i.e. they have to create an account to be able to purchase, you turn this off. I leave it on, and you're, you're, depending on your store. Um, if you don't allow guest checkout, you're going to lose lots of customers, in my opinion. Disable reordering option. I don't have a reason to disable that. Um, and everything else I leave pretty much the same. If you want to offer delayed shipping so they can pick when they want it to ship, you can turn that on. Gift wrapping uh, and recycled packaging down here. I don't do that. And most of my customers don't do that, so I leave that off. Um, go over here to statuses. This is your order statuses, and you can create as many custom ones as you want. And then these have emails attached to them, and it'll delivery, uh, send email to customer. This is the delivery slip, or this is the invoice. And then from there, you have your different um, order statuses. So this, you know, uh, waiting check payment, if you allow people to send you checks. Uh, most people don't do that. No one buys with check online unless you're maybe a, uh, you know, more business to business scenario. Payment accepted, payment and or processing in progress, uh, shipped, delivered, canceled, refund, you know, back ordered paid, back ordered not paid, remote payment accepted. Um, you know, if I do a manual payment, I use this one, waiting cash, you know, waiting PayPal payment, waiting bank payment, and you can go through and configure these. Um, typically out of the box, it's fine, unless you have, again, a custom need. Uh, return statuses, you know, waiting for confirmation, waiting for package, package received, return denied, return completed. Okay, so our customer returns. So that's your statuses tab. And most of this you don't have to change. We're going to go back to, uh, to product settings. Uh, catalog mode, this just and it disables purchasing really. Number of days which a product is considered new, 20 days, maximum size of product summary. You can limit how big your product summary is. Quantity discounts based on products or combinations. Update uh, friendly, uh, force update of friendly URL. I leave this off. Again, if you start changing URLs, you start changing your SEO uh, and your way that Google indexes things and that can cause problems and uh, decrease in sales. Okay, default activation status. Um, you can either have it default active or default not active when you create a new product. Um, the products per page, this is a category page. The more products you display, the more they get to see, but also it increases page load time, so be aware of that. Default order, okay, um, product page, 
display available quantities on the product page. This one I want to turn it off. Um, you know, display discounted price, and this is a, a sell based thing. If you put something on sell, you can, you know, do you want it to show the negative 5% or 5% off, or do you want to, you know, you can change how you want it to display here. Um, add display the add to cart button when a product has attributes. This means when we're talking about attributes multiple by like different shoe sizes, the add to cart button, this is in the category page. So if you have a category with a whole bunch of products listing, you can have a quick link that says add to cart. Well, if there's multiple attributes, they need to pick which attributes. So a lot of people like to turn this off, so they actually have to open the product before they can add it to cart. Okay. Display unavailable product attributes on the product page. If it's not available, why show it? Unless you want them to know that's available. You know, you can two different theories there. Allow ordering of out of stock products. This is where I said earlier in the products video. If you want to, where it says um, the quantities, if it's out of stock you know allow deny or use default this is where you set that default I like allowing out of stock and then enable stock management this is where you um, can track inventory or not and on this one what the heck we don't need to track you know say we don't need to track inventory um, it's produced you know if this is where you say you produce it as you sell it well when I get an order I produce it so I don't track inventory and then we'll save that once you have everything set the way you want it okay customer settings Uh, Redisplay cart at login, um, yes or no, I do believe that no, send an email after registration, I like that, enable B2B, um, if you're a business to business you can enable this, it doesn't really change a whole lot but it allows you to add company and sales tax information to register for sales tax, ask for birthday, enable partner offers, I don't really, you know, this allows you to, if you have partners that you collaborate in your business that you can get permission to send emails you know with collaboration no I don't really do that this is where you have customer groups so we had visitor guest customer if you want to add more groups this is where you do it say add a new group pretty easy um, titles and this is like mr. and mrs. I believe yeah mr. And mrs. whatever if you want, this is customer, you know, titles, sir, I, I, whatever. If you want to put them in there, go for it. it. It can be helped with on the marketing side to be able to show gender. Because when you get down to marketing, if you know the gender, you can, you know, you don't want to be sending, if you do clothing, you don't want to be sending males, female clothing. I get people that do, you know, companies that send me, you know, we have a discount on all of this stuff and it's all women's clothing. Like, well, I don't buy women's clothing. Why are you giving this to me? I guess I could buy it for my wife, but anyways, um, so that's basically that one. Let's go to contact. So this is where you can have webmaster customer support. When someone emails you, they can pick if there's a technical problem, question about an order, and then you can determine what email that sends it to. And I it defaults to whatever store you email you use to set your store up with. And you know we installed this, so it's you know just our basic admin email. But I go in there and change it. You know customer service at whatever or info at you know webmaster at whatever you want to do there and then you have your stores this is mainly helpful if you have a bunch of retail locations but you can mark all of the different stores that you have and then you have your contact details that you can set up for uh, your main headquarters is what I do here is whatever your headquarters is or if you don't have stores just go through and delete these you know and I know that we don't have stores well I like to fill one out and fill out contact information, uh, but so I'm just going to delete all but one of them here, or delete them all, and then we'll go back and we can add them later. But you can add stores there uh, if you have multiple locations. That's what you. That's where you want to put it so that uh, people can find you. Okay, this is traffic and SEO. As we mentioned, you probably won't use a whole heck of a lot of this. Um, this is you can do your uh, friendly URLs you can set what you want them to be uh, you can this is where you turn on friendly URL accented if you have a, a different type of language other than English you might have to enable this uh, and then there's some of these and I just leave these default I wouldn't get messing with those unless you really know what you're doing these are the rewrite codes again I would recommend just leaving these default unless you really specifically want it to say something you know here's a product category 
it says content slash category slash you know da 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 route to page content slash you know and so you can go through don't change this or your it won't work the only thing you have that you can change is these if you start right changing your ID rewrite if you take that out it's gonna error out and it's not gonna work correctly so like I said I would just leave those alone unless you really have something specific you need to change search engines again I just leave this alone unless you're having issues you can come in here um, and these are just search engine variables uh, I would just leave them default and then refers uh, I don't ever do really anything with this it's kind of a uh, uh, really in depth. If you're running a really large store, you can get into this, but I wouldn't even worry about it for now. Okay. So, like I said, most of this tab, I just leave it. I leave it alone. Search. This can be helpful, especially if you have some really weird uh, products, some hard to type names or whatever. You know, it says if someone types in blouse, it search for this, or if they type in this, search for this. So, if you have a word that's spelled multiple times or commonly misspelled, you find that people are misspelling it all the time. Okay. Add them here. You know, it'll really help your store out and it'll improve your your searchability. And you can have tags. I don't use product tags. Again, I think it's becoming more and more obsolete. Um, but they can be helpful in some scenarios. So you got, you know, indexing settings and then some other, you know, weight information. Um, search weightings, you know, what descriptions have the, the better weights when it, in terms of displaying results. Again, most of this you leave as default unless you're a massive store and really have some weird products. You shouldn't really need to do a whole lot here. Okay, there is shop parameters. So let's real quickly move on to the advanced parameters. Um, this is just the info tab. This tells you about your store. Um, if you have any bugs, a lot of times you can see you know those settings. Um, Smarty, uh, I just again leave it default. Disable non presto shop modules. No. Disable all overrides. I leave that as no. Debug mode. If you need to turn debug mode on, if you're having issues, you can turn it on here, and it'll spit out a code. If there's an error, it'll put a code at the top of the website, and it helps you narrow down what's going wrong. Um, so the customer groups, if you want to do customer groups, you can add, you have to turn it on here. Um, the basic stores don't need them. That's what I said by default. They're turned off. Combinations, if you do combinations, you can actually turn it off. By turning some of these things off, it can help speed your website up. That's really what it's for. Combine, compress, and cache. I just leave them all on, on, and then I leave this alone. If you want to turn on caching, you can, um, but there's, you know, just make sure it's set up right when you turn on caching. And sometimes it needs um, server side setup, so contact your developer, or you might have to do some research if you get into that side of caching. Okay, so everything's good there. Administration, you know, again, I don't really change hardly any of this. Upload size, max sizes. Notifications, you want notifications up here in the notification bar. Um, automatically check for module updates, etc. Okay. Emails. This is where you set up your email settings. If you can use the PHP mail function, this is based on servers, use it all the time. Your default email, customer service, webmaster, or leave it customer service, in my opinion. And then if you want to log emails or not. And then you can send a test. So this is your configuration. If you need to use SMT settings you can set them up here and set them but this is can be a really big pain especially if Google is your email provider because they're very restrictive and it can be a hassle to actually get this to function correctly so always default to this and, and just hope it works correctly uh, and you can come down here and say you know send a test email and it says oh looky it worked you know and then you don't have to do anything okay so import tab this is really handy if, you, if you're moving stores or have a big a product database that you want to just upload all at once. So you can upload categories, products, combination, customers, addresses, brand suppliers, aliases, and store contacts. So all of these you can upload. And here's a default sample files that you can download. Um, and in 1.7, the nice thing is they allow multiple formats. It used to be CS, CSV only. Now you can do Excel files and open source files and it'll import them directly. Um, just make sure to set these, delete all categories before import. You know, if you're doing a products, you know, do you want to delete all products before import? And if you're redoing your store, maybe, but make sure that's not set to yes and you delete all your previous products. Use product key as reference key. I leave that as no. Uh, skip thumbnail regeneration. I leave that, eh, it depends on your server speed, but you can skip it. Um, 
and I just pretty much leave all this to, to default um, unless you really specifically have a reason not to. This is the one that you really got to pay attention to is make sure you don't delete <laughs> your existing products if you don't want to. Okay, and then you have your field separator and multiple value separator that you can, depending on what file you're using, you can set those. So there's that. If you're just doing a small amount of products, it's a lot faster just to hand type them in, in my opinion, and configure them to try to do a spreadsheet and upload them. So now we'll get into the team. This is where you set the users, um, profiles. So you can have super admin, you know, translator, salesman, um, store manager, uh, employee, whatever. You can have different permissions. This is where you can come in here and let's pick out, let's say salesman. And, oops, sorry, that's the profile name. Now you got to go over here to do permissions. So now let's go to salesman. And you can now restrict what they have access to. So the salesman, you know, the salesman can look at shop parameters and traffic and SEO, referrals, you know, search, etc., advanced parameters. They can look at web service. You know, if they're a salesman, you might not want to, you know, they don't have access to the dashboard. You don't want them to see everything. Or, you know, you don't want them to be adding and, and changing, you know, the tax rates to try to give someone a discount. Yeah, it just... So you can go through and restrict different areas of the website for different user and employee profiles. Database, again, unless you're an advanced user, I really wouldn't use this. But you can do write your own SQL queries, queries to export data. If you need some custom exports, you need some special information, we can write codes to pull that out right here. Uh, this is just logs. Uh, you know, just logs information, who's logged in, who's saved what, who did what. You know, if you got issues, it'll code them over here. If it throws an error, you know, the security level, if there's a problem, it'll throw up an error code. And so you can look at your logs. And then your web service. Um, again, this is for advanced users. I wouldn't even mess with this unless you're doing something very, very specific or have a particular need. Okay. So that's pretty much setting up your store. That's all I do when it go through. I, I just go one by one and make sure all your settings are correct and set up your store. The other thing I would look at is doing your locations and taxes when you're setting everything up. Obviously payment's going to be an issue, but I'll go uh, through these in another video.